been getting reports of a drone and a rocket attack on the Ain al-Assad airbase that hosts U.S. and other international forces in western Iraq. According to the Reuters news agency, multiple blasts were heard inside the base. Now, the Ain al-Assad airbase is located in the western Anbar province. Meanwhile, in a separate incident, the U.S. Navy has intercepted three missiles in the northern Red Sea. The Pentagon says they believe this was a Houthi attack launched from Yemen and that prelim preliminary evidence suggests that the drones and missiles were potentially heading towards Israel. The crew of the guided missile destroyer USS Kearney, operating in the northern Red Sea earlier today, shot down three land attack cruise missiles and several drones that were launched by Houthi forces in Yemen. This action was a demonstration of the integrated air and missile defense architecture that we have built in the Middle East and that we are prepared to utilize whenever necessary to protect our partners and our interests in this important region. There were no casualties to U.S. forces and none that we know of to any civilians on the ground. Information about these engagements is still being processed. Uh, we cannot say for certain what these missiles and drones were targeting, but they were launched from Yemen, heading north along the Red Sea, potentially towards targets in Israel. Well, let's speak now to Mahmoud Abdul Wahid, our correspondent there who joins us from Baghdad. Mahmoud, I see there are no details from the Pentagon on what's just happened at Ain al-Assad. What do we know at this stage? Well, this is the third attack targeting a U.S. military facility in less than 24 hours. Uh, uh, on Wednesday, uh, two uh, military bases, the Ain al-Assad, this is the same military base that was targeted today, and Al-Harir military base, which is uh, uh, home to U.S. Uh, forces in northern Iraq, were also uh, targeted uh, by uh, drones and uh, missiles. Now, uh, military factions backed by Iran have been uh, recently threatening to uh, target U.S. Uh, military facilities uh, in case uh, the United States uh, continues uh, supporting and backing uh, Israel on its uh, military campaign against uh, uh, Gaza. Now, today's attack, according to security sources in the Ambar province, that's in western Iraq, where the military base is located, say that uh, several explosions were heard in front of the Ain al-Assad military base. It is not uh, known for certain until, as of yet uh, whether or not this attack, today's attack, has caused damage or casualties inside Ain al-Assad uh, uh, military base, mm -hmm. which is uh, home to uh, U.S. and international uh, military uh, personnel. As you know that many political and military factions in Iraq have been rising up against the military campaign by Israel in Gaza, threatening to take matters into their own hands, threatening to uh, travel to the borders with, uh, uh, with the Jordan and to mobilize there, and also uh, threatening to attack uh, uh, military uh, uh, U.S. Uh, interests in Iraq in case it continues to support uh, uh, Israel. Mahmoud Abdel Wahid on that developing story for us with the latest. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, let's now go to our correspondent, Patty Calhane, in Washington, D.C. Patty, we've just heard from the Pentagon. Given what we've seen over the last week and over the last few hours, no details from them on that, how real, though, are, are the fears of escalation now? Uh, they're very wor uh, worried about escalation. I think that you can see that in how little they are talking about it and how few details they are giving. Obviously, we are hearing reports that Ed, uh, uh, that base in Iraq has been hit multiple mm -hmm. times. It didn't even come up at the briefing. The briefing was delayed by about 45 minutes, so I assumed he was trying to get information to be able to relay that. But he is giving information about uh, attacks that happened days ago. He said on the 18th in the early morning mm -hmm. uh, hours in Syria, there are about 900 U.S. troops in Syria, that two drones were sent into the garrison, as he called it. One was destroyed. One got in and said it caused some injuries. Didn't really go into detail about how many, which is somewhat unusual for the Pentagon. Then talking about those strikes my colleague was just talking about in Iraq, uh, two drones, again, one destroyed, uh, one did, uh, they were able to damage it, but they said those two caused casualties, didn't explain again, again what casualties, and then that other uh, base in Iraq. So uh, obviously trying to use very tempered language because this is the concern in the United States. Polls show repeatedly that Americans are paying attention to what's going on, 
on, mm -hmm. and they are gravely, eight out of ten, concerned that this, very concerned that this could lead to a broader, con uh, broader conflict. So I think in the fact that the information is not necessarily coming out quickly mm -hmm. and that they're be giving very little detail shows just how much they want to be able to send the message that the U.S. is not getting involved. Although I have to say, shooting down missiles uh, from Yemen, a highly unusual move for mm -hmm. the Pentagon. And when asked why they did that, what was the justification, he really couldn't answer it. Uh, Patty, I'm curious about this because, as you say, there hasn't been a great deal of information sharing. This isn't the first attack this week on En El Assad. I'm, I'm wondering what we should make of what looks like an escalation. I know he was asked about whether or not they were taking additional measures to keep their staff safe. Is there a growing concern that, that something might have to change in terms of U.S. presence? I think the growing concern is going to be that these drones are actually causing injuries. You mm -hmm. know, they, they've had, um, they, for 20 years in Iraq, they set up all of these different systems to be able to knock things down out of the air. I was there, I could see like the, like a howitzer sort of thing, fires multiple, multiple bullets per second. Um, but the fact that the air warning system sounded, and in both cases, one drone was damaged and caused injuries, and another, the drone got through and caused mm -hmm. injuries. So obviously the concern is going to be be, can they actually protect their troops in the region? Because that would lead to a broader conflict. If a lot of Americans are killed, then you could easily see how this could escalate. Uh, so I think one of the questions they're going to be asking in the Pentagon is, how did this happen? Because obviously they've invested a lot of money on air defense systems in both Iraq and Syria. Patty Calhane there with the latest for us from Washington, D.C. after that Pentagon press conference. Thank you, Patty.